Welcome back. You're watching Sports on Primetime. Now, there's some big news out of the world of boxing. Up-and-coming South African heavyweight boxer Ruan Fisser will now be trained by none other than Vladimir Klitschko's coach, James Ali Bashar. And my guests tonight are Ruan Fisser and James Ali Bashar. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thanks for having us. Now, Ruan, it's, uh, it's a big jump in your career. Is this the necessary steps you have to take to get where you need to be? Definitely. Uh, a coach like Ali Bashir has been in boxing from 1967. I mean, he had a lot of world champions, Lennox Lewis, Shannon Briggs. I mean, he's done it all. And uh, to have him in my camp and, and to learn from him is a big honor for me as a 26-year-old. James, uh, as Ruan says, you've been around and you have a, an extensive CV when it comes to boxing. You've obviously seen something special in Ruan. Can you let us in on what it is? Character. Character is the main thing that motivates me to work with different boxers. I get calls from all over the world. Spain, Italy, France, Australia, you name it, I get calls. But it's a special character that I see in the individual that makes me want to be with the individual. You know, and I saw that in Ron in uh, the Latimer Klitschko camp. We what? bonded right away. And that camp was, that, that, that raised a lot of eyebrows for people. Ron, what did you do in the camp? Uh, it sounds like you went the distance. And uh, are you just there to be a sparring partner? Or is it also a case that you can develop yourself as a boxer there? Um, they're using me for sparring. Mm -hmm. But uh, for myself, I go there to learn from the best. I mean, Klitschko has been a world champion for 10 years. So I, I try to cop everything that he does. His yeah. routine, so I just uh, look, at, look up to him. He's a role model, role model for me. And he's the kind of heavyweight fighter that you would like to um, be like? Yeah, definitely. He's a, he's a great example of a great heavyweight. He carries himself very well. Um, speak about the, James, speak about the, the training camp. I mean, for Ruan to, to last the entire camp. Uh, they're not easy things to do, are they? Um, to to no. take a pounding <laughs> from the champion, basically. No, no. Not by any stretch of the imagination. It's a very rugged camp. And uh, individuals that do survive throughout that four or five weeks, uh, it says something about them. It says something about their mentality, about their durability, and right. their character. Because there are a lot of people who have come in the camp, you know, in my 13 years working with the champion, um, there's a lot of people that come and... You know, I have guys come to me and say, look, I don't belong here. I need to go, you know. So, yeah, it says a lot about Ron's uh, character to stay in. And obviously, I mean, these camps, it's a business, uh, you know, for the champ. I mean, they have to get into a certain level of fitness. So they need these guys to be on the top of their game as well. Yeah, so Latimer Klitschko is the kind of champion uh, that pushes himself. He pushes himself to the, to the limit. So he wants the best sparring partners, the best work, anybody that can threaten him. Uh, at one point, he was giving out $1,000 to anybody that could knock him down. Yeah. So that, was, that says something, you know, that's tough. He put a price tag on his own head saying that anybody that can put me down, anybody that can injure me gets $1,000 extra, you know. And I, 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 I'm, I'm the opposition. Jonathan Banks is the lead trainer. Mm -hmm. I'm the co-trainer. Uh, I'm in the opposite corner. So I tell the sparring partners, I say, hey, man, look, if you knock them down, I get $200 of the, of the you know, I want, let's knock them down. Hey, Ruan, you're going back for a, for a second helping. You've been invited back for the next training camp where he's uh, preparing for Anthony Joshua. Obviously, this is big for him uh, as he's getting to the, the twilight, of the, so wrapping up his career. Um, what, what do you expect uh, going into that camp? Um, he's using me for my youth mm -hmm. and my strength because Anthony Joshua is young, young and uh, um, a lot of strength. So he's using me for that. So I'm just going to work hard and give my best in the camp to help the, to help the Klitschko to be able to win the fight. Are there clear guidelines as to what the, the Klitschko camp gives to you as, uh, as the guys coming in um, as to what you need to be focusing on? They, they tell you what they want. So um, they tell you to, but you must try and copy the style of Anthony Joshua. Mm -hmm. So um, they definitely tell you what to do, and then you must just try to do your best in the, in the, in the ring. Don't get knocked out. 
In terms of your development as a boxer, what would you say, this is, this is kind of like a golden opportunity. Um, how much more do you learn here than you do if, say for instance, you work the circuit and, and put the fights in against uh, you know, l lower ranked uh, guys? I mean, this is an opportunity I have to take with both hands, to, take, to be able to work with Bashir. And uh, I think in two years from now, I'll be on the big stage. I'll definitely be a contender for the title with Coach Bashir here. So I think that's, that's uh, um, the main, main goal, two years from now, right. to go for titles here. Yeah. And Coach, I mean, taking Ruan on, obviously, is also uh, about trying to make a stand in a, in a division that uh, has been slipping and, and, and comes up a little bit and it goes down. There are a few bastions like the Klitschko brothers who keep it alive, but by and large, it's not been um, representing itself on the, on the, uh, the card. Well, I, I, it's mainly because there, there are no real teachers in boxing anymore, right. and that's why it's slipping. Uh, all of the teachers, all of the formidable teachers have come and they are now deceased. So there are only a few teachers left in the sport that teaches the sport. You understand? I like yeah. to think of myself as one of those teachers, uh, one of those top three teachers in the world, you know? And I, I mean, you, you learned under Emmanuel Stewart. Uh, well, long well, before I even got to Emmanuel yeah. Stewart, I worked with good trainers all, the way, all, all of my career. I've worked with good trainers. I've always been under good trainers. Emmanuel Stewart was the icing on the cake. Right. You know, for me to be with um, Emmanuel Stewart, he was the, the, definitely the icing on the cake. Uh, I, I was with him the last years, right up until uh, the last challenge. Uh, we worked with Latimer Klitschko versus Tony Thompson, number two in Bern, Switzerland. That was the last time I saw him, the last time I spoke with him. Right. You know, so it's definitely a plus to have been under... Um, Emmanuel Stewart. I learned a, not just boxing, but I learned a lot about life, a lot about boxing strategy, you know, being with Stewart, with things that uh, other trainers don't think about, you know. Yeah. Um, and I mean, Ruan, you're going to take all this collective wisdom and use it for your uh, assault on the heavyweights um, uh, division. But how, how adamant are you that the, that the division needs to... Uh, jack up and it needs to become a force that we all remember how it was. Yeah, especially for South Africa. I think everybody is looking for heavyweight to bring boxing back to South Africa. And there's a lot of talent in South Africa, but yeah. we need this exposure to the world to see South Africans. Uh, we've got good boxers and get the young, young guys also to start boxing again. I think, I think uh, boxing is, a, is in a great area, area now in South Africa. I think we can bring boxing back. This is a good exposure for us. Coach, I mean, it, how different is it to uh, training uh, the other um, divisions, uh, to training a heavyweight and a champion heavyweight? I think that's something that, again, that, that's missing in boxing today uh, with different coaches. Uh, different coaches are, are better to train different weight classes. Training a heavyweight is not like training a featherweight or a welterweight or a lightweight. Uh, I had uh, just recently, I took the, the world champion Oleksandr Usek uh, into his fight against Tabiso Manchuno from, from right here in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And I've taken uh, Oleksandr Usek against a number of South African fighters, good South African fighters, mind you. And uh, I had, in one of those uh, cases, I had somebody come in the locker room and complain about the amount of gauze that I was using for the hand. But you can't expect to be to use uh, uh, the same amount of gauze on a on a a cruiserweight's yeah. hand or or heavyweight's hand as you do on a featherweight's hand. No, there's no problem with the gauze. There's no ruling about the gauze. The tape just can't go over the knuckle. Yeah, I explained that to him. So I expected this young man that was training that fighter to know that, but he didn't know that, and it was shocking to me that he didn't know that at that level of boxing. And, I mean, it's that collective wisdom that, that you say is, is, is falling That's away. That's absent. Yeah. That's absent from boxing. And, and I see it here in South Africa. I see it in New Zealand, Australia, United States. I see it everywhere. That the people that's invited to boxing, the people that's lead trainers, they don't know any more than people off the street. Boxing is a bastard sport mm -hmm. where you can just come in off the street. 
You can't go into rugby, football, baseball, boxing. You cannot go into those sports without having credentials. Boxing is one of those uh, sports where you can just come in. But the knowledge, you can see the application of knowledge therein. You know? It's called the sweet science for a reason. It's called uh, the sweet science for a reason. <laughs> Ruin, you're in great hands now. Uh, when can we expect another uh, professional bout uh, from you? How far along in your evolution is, is that going to be? Uh, the 24th of February, I'm fighting in the Carousel for the ABU and uh, WBF title. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. And we, we're busy with a training camp right now, so I'm feeling very good for the fight. Well, we wish you best of luck in your career Thanks and you. with your new coach. And gentlemen, thank you very much for thank joining you. us. Let me say, give a shout out to my family. Absolutely, go for it. Ned, <laughs> Juanita, Ruben, hey, I'm here. <laughs> and you're on TV, you're in South Africa, and you've got the new heavyweight champion in waiting. Yes, in waiting. I, I think that we stand a good chance to win it. But it's going to take a lot of, I was uh, explaining to him, coming here, it, it's going to take a lot of hard work, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. I mean, people, have, people only see these guys when they step in the ring. Yeah. But they don't see the brutality that goes on to build them up to come to the ring. Absolutely. They don't see what goes on in the Klitschko camp, how much blood and how much ups and downs and cuts and what have you. So, Well, we ask that you keep us there with you on your journey and you come back and report back. We'll be happy to have you. But thank you very much for being with us. Yes, thanks, Lord. no doubt about it. Right now, the Red Bull King.